Macrolides and ketolides are characterized by a macrocyclic lactone ring with attached deoxy sugars. Four macrolides are used clinically. These include erythromycin, clarithromycin, azithromycin, and fidaxomycin. Erythromycin is the first antibiotic discovered as a part of this class, and it was first isolated from the metabolic products of S. erythrea in 1952. Azithromycin and clarithromycin are semi-synthetic derivatives of erythromycin, and both azithromycin and clarithromycin have by and large replaced erythromycin in the clinic. Fidaxomycin is an interesting macrolide from a pharmacokinetics perspective, as fidaxomycin is not systemically absorbed and is mainly used to treat C. difficile colitis. Like azithromycin and clarithromycin, the ketolides are also semi-synthetic derivatives of erythromycin. The biggest difference is that ketolides sometimes have activity in macrolide-resistant bacterial strains. The only U.S. clinically relevant ketolide is telithromycin. Proteins are essential for all cells to function and survive. Ribosomes play an essential role in the translation of mRNA into proteins. Bacterial ribosomes are different than human ribosomes, as bacterial and human ribosomes contain different ribosomal subunits. Protein synthesis inhibitors take advantage of this difference. Bacterial ribosomes are made up of a 70S particle consisting of a 50S large and a 30S small subunit. Specifically, macrolides and ketolides are protein synthesis inhibitors that bind reversibly to the 50S ribosomal subunit of the bacterial ribosome. The binding of the macrolide or ketolide prevents translocation of the tRNA from the acceptor site, A site, to the peptidyl donor site, P site, on the bacterial ribosome. This halts protein synthesis. In addition to this mechanism, macrolides and ketolides can elicit a conformational change in the bacterial ribosome, which can result in indirect inhibition of transpeptidation. Lastly, macrolides and ketolides can inhibit the formation of the 50S ribosomal subunit. Macrolides and ketolides are bacteriostatic. According to a 2009 study in the Journal of Infection and Chemotherapy, there are four main mechanisms of resistance to macrolides and ketolides. The first is active drug efflux. Efflux of the macrolide or ketolide will reduce intracellular concentrations and prevent antibiotic action. Secondly, the ribosome can be shielded or protected from macrolides and ketolides by the production of methylase enzymes. These methylase enzymes modify the macrolide and ketolide binding site on the 50S ribosomal subunit, which results in reduced antibacterial action. Thirdly, degradation of the macrolide or ketolide can occur. An example of this is the degradation of macrolides by esterases produced by enterobacteriaceae. Lastly, mutations to the 50S ribosomal subunit can occur. These mutations can alter macrolide and ketolide binding and decrease their antibacterial action. This is a mechanism of resistance utilized by gram-positive cocci, mycobacteria, campylobacter species, and bacillus subtilis. Antibacterial action of macrolides and ketolides is largely bacteriostatic, but this can turn to bactericidal at high enough concentration. Erythromycin has good activity against streptococci, pneumococci, and staphylococci. In addition, erythromycin is active against C. jejuni, M. pneumoniae, Legionella pneumophila, C. trachomatis, Chlamydophila cytosi, Chlamydophila pneumoniae, H. pylori, and the gram-positive bacilli including Clostridium perfringens, Cornibacterium diphtheriae, and L. monocytogenes. Some gram-negatives are also susceptible to erythromycin, and these include Bartonella species, Quintana species, Neisseria species, Rickettsia species, and Treponema pallidum. Staphylococci are not reliably sensitive and resistance can emerge. Erythromycin is inactive against most aerobic enteric gram-negative bacilli. Azithromycin has similar activity as erythromycin. Azithromycin is active against Moraxella catarallis, chlamydia species, which is highly active against chlamydia species, L. pneumophila, B. burgdorferi, M. pneumoniae, and H. pylori. Azithromycin is less active than erythromycin and clarithromycin against streptococci and staphylococci. 
In contrast, azithromycin is more active against H. influenzae. Clarithromycin is more potent than erythromycin against sensitive streptococci and staphylococci. In addition, clarithromycin is active against the same bacteria highlighted with azithromycin. Like azithromycin, clarithromycin is also active against H. influenzae. Vodaxomycin is mainly used to treat C. difficile infection in the GI tract. The ketolide telithromycin is similar to azithromycin and clarithromycin, with the added ability to withstand resistance in macrolide-resistant S. pneumoniae and S. aurelia strains. This is because ketolides are poor substrates for drug efflux, and because ketolides can bind the ribosomes of some bacterial species with a higher affinity when compared to the macrolides. Adverse effects do occur with macrolide and ketolide use. The most common adverse effects are diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, and anorexia. This epigastric distress is induced by erythromycin due to erythromycin acting on motilin receptors that directly stimulate GI motility. GI distress is also possible with azithromycin, clarithromycin, and telithromycin. However, it happens to a lesser degree versus erythromycin. Less frequently, macrolides and ketolides can induce arrhythmias. Hepatotoxicity in the form of cholestatic hepatitis can result from prolonged erythromycin use. Hepatotoxicity can also occur with clarithromycin and azithromycin, but it is a lower frequency when compared to erythromycin. Patients can be hypersensitive to macrolides and ketolides. Hypersensitivity can manifest as skin eruptions, eosinophilia, and fever. These symptoms discontinue soon after stopping treatment. This concludes the video. Thanks for watching. Please direct any questions to me on Twitter at Sheehy underscore Ryan. I've also included my sources here. Thanks again.